makes it less confusing. I know it. How's the weather in Chicago? Cold? It's sunny today. It's sunny. 40 maybe, 40 oh, degrees, good. sunny. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. We are live. And we just want to welcome everyone to episode 22 of the Inner Strength Empowerment Hour. I am Lori DePietro Standen, and these are my success coaches, uh, Lori Taylor, who we call LT, and Joanne Nagel. Um, and we also have a special guest today, and that is uh, LT's mom, a superstar in her own right, Jane Stevens. <laughs> No superstar. Yes, we also call her Grand, <laughs> but you can call her Jen. Yes, you can call her what? Grand. Everybody calls her Grand because you know okay. she's the grandmother. But um, but yeah, Jane, okay. Miss Jane. When you're in the Miss South, Jane. Miss Jane. I like Miss Jane. <laughs> call her Miss Jane. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt if you're playing. So, uh, but today what we want to talk about is aging gracefully, and that can be um, a really loaded topic for women. It's something I started thinking about many years ago uh, when I started working as a personal trainer. Um, I was 39, and what I noticed was that everyone in, who, was, who was a trainer there um, besides me was in their 20s. And so here you had, um, you know, 22, 23 year old uh, boys and girls training women my age. And a lot of women were getting hurt because of the heavy stuff they had them doing. They would have them standing upside down on a BOSU ball, which is not what you're supposed to do with that thing, by the way, um, doing kettlebell swings. I mean, just crazy. Anyone who's ever worked out, you know what I'm talking about. And I mean, it's, it's, if you fall off of that, you're going to get hurt. And so they were doing these crazy things. And also it just didn't make sense um, for the fitness goals that these women had. But, but what was interesting about it um, also was that when people would find out that I was 39, they treated me differently. And it wasn't, I felt very set apart. Um, from the other trainers there, uh, not just because of my philosophy or whatever. And, and it, it wasn't a thing where I was older and wiser. Um, it was, you could definitely, there was definitely a thing where I was looked down upon a bit. And so I started thinking of it back then. And then I also, um, I remember I had watched Friends years and years ago. And then I saw, um, you know, Courtney Cox, uh, was in some other uh, uh, sitcom uh, shortly. I don't know, was that, I'm trying to remember what that was called. If anyone remembers the name of that. Um, I think it was called Cougar Town. Okay, yes, that was it. And when I saw her, I was shocked at all the stuff she had had done to her face. She, you know, she was so beautiful anyway. And what I just started really thinking about was how we feel the need to act like we're not getting older. And obviously that doesn't make a lot of sense. So how do we do this in a way where we are aging gracefully, um, where we're doing it well, uh, but we're, we don't feel the need to act like it's not happening. Um, so that's what we want to talk about today. But first, I want to uh, introduce uh, Jane Stevens, and um, they are coming to us today from Georgia, um, where I'm sure it is much warmer than it is here in Ohio. Uh, and well, we uh, took a cold snap. We, and we've turned cold here. It's, it's gone down about 20 degrees. Oh, so wow. it's, it's okay. a cold day for Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about 35 here, so we have moved But you on. are colder. <laughs> we moved right. on from the spring of deception, and now we're right back to winter over here, so. Um, That's right. So, uh, but what I, uh, 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 Jane has been through a transformation, um, and I will let them tell the story, but LT um, and I talked about, about this, you know, uh, early on. Um, about, uh, you know, how, how Jane wasn't feeling her best and she changed her diet. Um, and by following the tenets of my program, some, some big and really amazing changes have, have happened. So, but first I wanted to ask you, Jane, um, how, how were you feeling before you changed your diet? 
And how long do you feel like that had been going on? Well, when, when we moved to this retirement center, I really ate more because the food was prepared, prepared by a good chef. And I know I was eating uh, too much uh, sugar, too, too, too many sauces, butter. Uh, I just know I was overeating and I was not feeling well. Yeah, and it caught up with me. Yes, it did. So it was and a like dessert. He had a dessert. <laughs> I was just about to say a lot of desserts. My husband's a chef, so I know that when, when he and I first met, I don't think he knew how to make a dish without heavy cream. Um, and so it's a lot of meat and dairy and yes. like said, butter and cream and sauces and yes. dessert. That's just how we eat. And, yeah. it, and it was. And they also had a little counter of snacks that they could get from. And a lot of it was sweet snacks and muffins and a brownie or a piece of cake or a bag of potato chips. So that was always available that they could get that as well. And I brought them back to the apartment and I ate. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, correctly. <laughs> yeah. So how, how were you feeling during that time? Well, I was, I was really getting, not feeling well a lot of the times. And I asked, I thought it was a salt. I said, I think you're putting, are you putting a lot? I didn't accuse. I said, uh, are you putting a lot of salt in, in everything you cook? Oh, well, I use low salt, but see, I was blaming it on salt when it was really probably a little bit salt, but too much other stuff too in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I mean. And what were, how were you feeling? What were the physical symptoms? Well, I was having to take a lot of Tums. I was eating a lot of Tums. And then my stomach would just feel, I would just feel overstuffed. And then I didn't sleep, sleep well. You know, I felt like I needed to eat everything. And I did eat almost mm -hmm. everything on my plate, which was a meat and two or three vegetables and the breads. Oh, yeah. The butter and the butter and, and the desserts and the rich desserts, right. you know, uh -huh. and, and, um, and she would get a little nauseated and then feel a little bit stuffed and just get that little sicky feeling. And sometimes she would get dizzy. So she had some of that going on in conjunction with it. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me, when I wasn't feeling well like that, it was make, it made me depressed. Do you feel like it affected you emotionally at all? Like, well, uh, well, I don't know. At the time I was taking care of my husband who was really already in a declining state mm -hmm. with the Parkinson's and dementia and heart, trouble. heart, just multiple problems. I won't get into that, but I was really not sleeping well at night. He was keeping me awake all night. I had to get up and down with him all day, all night long. And, and just, um, uh, just general didn't, but I loved the food and I ate and I kept eating and kept eating and until, um, well, he died a year and a half ago and, but I kept eating the food, but I knew certain things were really bothering me. It's the hot chicken salad for one thing. Yeah. And, and I noticed he is not cooking that now. He's not had that on the menu mm -hmm. in the last several months anyway some foods were just really playing havoc on her system and that one in particular and it was just full of a lot of heavy cream and then they topped it with a bunch of salty potato chips on the top now here in the south we do put a lot of ritz crackers and butter and things on top but on that one they put potato chips yes so that was playing havoc with her system and what she was saying is that she just had a lot going on she was had to endure a lot with my dad during during the final stages of his decline and so I guess it just was easy to eat because, you know, when somebody prepares something for you, you just walk down the hall and get it. But it right. did, it did have an adverse effect. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, and like you're saying, Jane, it made you want to keep eating it too. When, when you're eating that way, even yeah. if you know it's, it's not sitting well with you, you crave it. Your gut flora starts uh, acclimating. Yeah. And so, so how quickly did you start to, um, well, first of all, when uh, when LT mentioned, when Lori mentioned um, a plant-based diet, what did you think? Were you open to that? Well, 
Yes, because I really have uh, two falls last April because we've been on lockdown here at the retirement center and the falls, then I was to the point that I couldn't eat because everything was just making me so nauseated. And I was just really just eating enough to keep me going really. And I was staying in bed because I was so nauseated. I think I had a concussion, which was never diagnosed because we, they didn't want to take me to the hospital because of COVID and blah, blah, blah. COVID's really played a part in a lot of this. But anyway, I just laid in bed almost for two months and then Lori came and got me last June and immediately started the plant-based diet and I started feeling better and I had already lost then 20, 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. I was down to 116. At one time I weighed 160 something up to 165 I think but anyway um, I'm still at 116 but I'm, I'm eating all vegetables now and I know he doesn't cook everything in a plant-based butter, but I am eating those vegetables and some of the meats and trying to leave off all the sweets. Although sometimes I do get the, the, uh, the diabetic dessert. Okay. That is an yeah. option. When I went and got her last summer, I just was shocked that she was in the state that she was in. She could barely walk to the car. She looked like she had aged so much in a short period of time. She had just been through so much and was feeling just so, so poorly and had really undersold how, how bad she was doing and feeling. And so I just knew that I had to swoop in and she came and stayed with me for um, almost two months, but she started eating better right away because she could tolerate these plant-based foods and her stomach was able to tolerate it because she at the time had been diagnosed with cysts on her pancreas and it was just wreaking havoc the certain foods that she was eating was really inflaming that and just making her very very sick yeah and i had and diagnosed they diagnosed me too with gastric uh, i mean chronic gastritis chronic chronic gastritis so what she was eating here at the center was just really taking a toll making her sick I love the Ezekiel bread. Yeah, she loves Ezekiel bread. We got her on those grain sprouted bread. But she is, she's never one to complain, but she loved every every one of the plant-based meals that we had. And, and we were just noticing that she didn't need the Tums anymore. And then by the end of that couple of months with me, she was able to walk much better. Just the spirit had come back, you know, just, just looking like that she was her, starting to be her old self again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that is, that's the thing that happens even, you know, no matter what age you are, um, when you adopt a plant-based diet, it, you know, you just immediately, if you're doing it the right way, which you guys were, um, start feeling better. And it's that the food that we're eating is, is killing us. It's causing brain fog. It's causing, you know, inflammation. It's causing, I, almost every woman I talk to has some kind of digestive issues and, but yet they'll yeah. blame it on conditions and not talk about the food that you're putting in your body all the yeah. time. Yeah. But so, I tell the women out here. <laughs> yeah. She's your biggest advocate. She tells everybody about a plant-based diet out here. Yeah. Hey. And I'm non-dairy. And she's become non-dairy. Non-dairy. That's yeah. so important. That is so important. Yeah. So what's, what is, what is your favorite food so far have, that you have been, uh, you know, is, is there anything that you like now that you, you are, you weren't eating before? Well, uh, um, well, Brussels sprouts for one, I have never really liked Brussels sprouts, so I just didn't eat them. So now I do eat, I don't really like them, still don't, but I know they're healthy and I do eat, I eat every vegetable he prepares. I she, get, it, she gets every vegetable. I get order. every vegetable. Yeah. And I, like I say, I know they're not in plant-based butter, but I do eat every vegetable. Yeah. Except the uh, fried okra. I don't get the fried okra. And mm -hmm. I loved fried okra, but I never get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And her snacking has changed. She likes snacking in a different way because I've gotten her on things that are more vegan, that are, you know, dairy-free and that still, you know, are, are the good snacks that we call the vegan processed food. That's much better than eating some of the snacks that she was eating before. Don't eat chocolate. 
I don't keep any kind of sugar things in my room. No. Mm -hmm. Do you, Jane, do you feel that you're craving more healthy foods now? Healthy. Well, I'm not, I don't feel a crave for sweets like I did. I okay, used to just right. crave a cookie and I couldn't eat one. I would eat two, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she used to always have to have something sweet right after dinner. That was just something that was ingrained with them from childhood. You know, her mother was an excellent cook, my grandmother, and always had something good. And so she's just kind of stepping away from that now because she knows that that's not that doesn't make her feel her best. And I will say she's one of the more active people out here in this retirement community. She's a big walker now. And she, she likes to have her walker with her just for, you know, for insurance and she can go a little faster, but she can run circles just about anybody in this, in this particular facility. I, we will say that. <laughs> I'm only 82 and a half. You're 81 and a half. 81 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Going on 82. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, good. I'm so glad that you were able to talk to us today about this because not only for ourselves, but we all have um, mothers and grandmothers and, you know, people in our lives who um, are, are struggling, um, not just with, you know, some of the typical issues that you might have as you are getting older, but because of the way that we're eating. And I find yeah. um, that especially, uh, you know, like with my grandparents, uh, my grandma died of Alzheimer's. Um, and the way that, that they, that she ate at the end, it was just all sweets and just, mm. you know, she'd eat like a peanut butter sandwich. She'd eat a lot of donuts. Um, yes. you know, it just, uh -huh. Yeah, it just is, you know, and it's, it's, they have actually shown um, that a plant based diet uh, can um, help with dementia, uh, because the same yeah. stuff that is clogging up our arteries is clogging up our brain. Um, right. And so it's just so important to get the word out there. Um, and so we yeah, are, I try. Yeah, I say yes, it, but it's like, but all these women are not, you know, they've already had two knees replaced. They've already had shoulders replaced, arthritis and all this, you know. So I haven't had any of that. Knock on wood, no. maybe I won't. And there's but. a lot of sedentary people that live out here and they're, they're much, much bigger. And you can tell that they're sitting in their wheelchair or their little scooter. And it's just kind of become the norm for them. And mom's out here, when it's cold, she walks the halls. And when it's, when it's pleasant outside, she walks outside. And they do have some exercise exercise classes for them here they're they're kind of adjusted to them because they're they're related to the chair yeah right. and we danced yesterday we did all <laughs> kinds of dancing yesterday yeah. Good. yeah that's and that's the thing too is it's it's also about just it's a healthy lifestyle which includes activity yeah. when you're feeling better, mm -hmm. when you're feeling better yeah. physically it enables you you know like you guys are saying to get out there and get more active yeah um, yeah so and to participate, and it's good because the restrictions are being lifted a little bit here at COVID. That's why I'm able to be here because for a while I could not I could not visit her inside of this apartment. You know, I could pick her up at that portico, but I couldn't come inside. So this is the first time I've been in her apartment now in in 13 months. Yeah, but they kept us safe from COVID. They kept them safe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the the uh, the Facebook people are are saying great things about this. Um, uh, Gina says, "LT, your mom is so cute and sweet. You both look beautiful." Oh, um, thank, you. thank you. And, okay. Thank you. So, so thank you so much I'll for joining us. <laughs> okay. Thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. She's on a little meal plan where you can go to the dining hall to get your meals. So yeah. she's just making better choices because they do have choices available to them. There's always some things that, that are always steady that you can choose. And then he does a rotating menu out too. That's great. And he probably took that, you know, the hot chicken off the menu because I'm sure she <laughs> wasn't the only one who was getting sick from it. I mean, probably not. So it really, yeah. it's, a, it's a lot. Um, so I wanted to, I mean, obviously wanted to start with, with Jane so we could um, get her off to the rest of her day, but I think it's a good way to kick us off because I know that um, 
you know, the thing that I hear over and over again, and what has happened in my life is that a plant based diet, my program in particular, has been a fountain of youth. The, the thing that I um, hear over and over again from women is how much younger they're feeling, how much younger they're looking. Um, and in that it, it's the plants. Um, so what I wanted to ask each of you, what physical changes, um, or, or, you know, as you were getting older, uh, were, ha, were you experiencing before you changed your diet that made you feel, you know, old? Well, I think the, the biggest issue that I had that I thought was just age related was my joint pain. I, I mean, I had reached a point where I was in chronic, chronic pain, like severe. And I thought, well, this is what getting old feels like and it sucks, but this is just what everybody feels like. You know, I was living on Advil and that wasn't even helping. And I just, I felt really weak. Like every, you know, to pick up something, I felt, oh, I can't lift that. I'm so weak or you know, I just, I felt tired all the time. And I thought, well, that's just what happens when you're over 40 or over 45 or, you know, it just seemed like that's what you see is everybody just settling in and watching all their TV at night and no, you know, no energy to do anything. So yeah, I just felt drained basically. And we joke about it. Like I saw a, uh, a meme a little while back that said, I'm at the age where if I drop something on the floor, I ask myself, do I really need that? <laughs> I was know? there. I was doing that. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> you know, you buy those little, people are buying those little things that the grabbers <laughs> pick things yeah. up. The and, little claw, the grippers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, us, and, us short people have those to reach things on the top cabinet. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I'm forever asking John. John's six feet yes. tall. Um, so he's, he's eight, eight inches taller than I am. And I'm always like, Hey, babe, I need your help over here. Um, but, <laughs> but right. I, you know, I was having trouble. Like I could no longer just easily get out of a parked car. Yeah. Like I just, you know, you're like kind of dragging yourself out and mm -hmm. I, you know, so there's just, it, it makes you feel old mm -hmm. when you are when you feel that way all the time, when you're tired and you're stiff and you're achy, it doesn't matter how old you are, you feel old. What about you, LT? What were you, was there anything in particular? Yeah, I was still exercising even when I was heavier, but what I will notice is the times that I was not doing that. I think I was more sedentary at that time. Um, I just didn't, it was, I would say lackluster would be a good word just kind of like I know energy tired didn't feel like it just didn't have that spark didn't have the vibrancy and that's when we use the word existing a lot instead of thriving or living so while I was still active in that hour or whatever I was doing with the exercise it's all those in between times and now I've just noticed a big difference because I just feel like that I have energy for days I'm up and going and doing hardly ever sit um just kind of have a lilt in my step, have a spring in my step and just kind of am more excited about things, looking forward to more things. Whereas before it was kind of coming from an attitude of dread or have to do it, or that's one more thing. Oh, right. Yeah. I think also for me, you're frozen again. Yep, it normally pops back, doesn't it? Yeah, come back, Lori. <laughs> I know. Maybe we lost her for good this time. And it's something don't we know. don't talk about. Oh, there she is. There we are. Hi, there we are. <laughs> there we are. We're back. It's a time warp. Um, <laughs> I, I time traveled. You guys just didn't know. I know it. Um, okay, so... Uh, the thing that I, I think we don't talk about enough is, is, you know, I didn't feel feminine anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't even, I don't think if you would have, if you would have asked me about all my symptoms at the time, I wouldn't have listed that because I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just so, you know, 
wrapped up in all the other issues that I was having with the digestion and the bloat and the achiness and, you know, mm-hmm. all these different things. But I, my libido was, you know, gone. Mm-hmm. and, but also I just didn't feel feminine. I felt very androgynous. And I didn't realize that the extent of that until I started not feeling that way anymore Mm -hmm. and was kind of like getting my mojo back. And then I was like, oh, wow, I've missed this. I didn't realize that it had gotten that bad. Um, And, you know, and as I've, I've talked about, um, you know, with, with you guys and and here uh, on the inner strength empowerment hour before, you know, then you know, you get to an age two where they're sending you the AARP stuff in the mail, and, <laughs> yes. um, which is yeah. all about uh, estate planning, funeral planning, um, getting more right. Medi- Medicare d- type of insurance and all of these things. And it's like, it's just preparing you for death. Yeah. So it's like, here you are on all these medications, you're overweight, you don't feel well, um, you don't feel, you know, feminine. And, and like you said, Joanne, you're just kind of, you know, you, you settle, you start mm-hmm. settling for that. And you start mm-hmm. saying things like, I'm too old for that. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever, um, whatever the thing is. Um, so were you guys, were you guys the people who dreaded your birthday, who dreaded getting older or no? I just dreaded getting older because my family history, nobody lives very long on my, like on my dad's side. Um, well, my dad died at 47. I'm 47 right now. So when I contacted you, I was 46 and I was, I was not only dreading my birthday, I was scared to death of turning 47. Cause I thought, okay, well, that's it. This is my last year here. Cause I had felt, I felt so bad. And given my family history, I thought I'm heading down the same road. And, and even his grandpa or his parents. So my grandparents only lived to be 60, 61. So, you know, it, it wasn't looking good for me is what I'm saying. So I was not looking forward to my mm-hmm. next birthday at all. Yeah. Yeah. They think the people. Yeah. Like- and mine wasn't. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I didn't look forward to my birthday at all. It was actually a dread every year. And I don't know that it was a dread because of the age going up. It was a definite dread because I was not where I wanted to be. And yet again, I had reached another number where I had failed because I was on all these yo-yo programs for all these years. And yet again, I did not have it together by my birthday. Right. Mm -hmm. I never really dreaded the actual number. um, Yes. It's funny, though, because my grandma, I remember my grandma was a very beautiful woman. um, And I think the aging process Plus the fact that she wasn't feeling well, it was, it was hard on her because losing, she didn't want to lose that, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, so she always, from the time I was little, she told everyone she was 29. Um, and she <laughs> joked about it, you know, but you know, she, th- she said that to the end. Um, but I never, it wasn't really the, the number, um, that bothered me. I just saw, because people in, in, uh, even though everyone on my, on my, um, my grandma's side had died of heart disease many of them she was one of 11 so many of them were much older than her and it's not that people were dying super young it's that they were they had no quality of life and so it's like I I felt like I was staring down the barrel of about spending about 30 years dying yeah yeah and you know that that was not appealing to me um so you know and even though it's not something that you're necessarily on the forefront of your mind every day, it's there. Mm-hmm. You know, you're always thinking that. Um, and plus you're getting these cues from the world that you're, that there's a problem because you're <clears throat> aging, that this is, this is not a good thing. So how about, um, you know, do you feel like, what about when you started getting gray hair? If you, you know, what, how did you feel about that? What, what was your reaction? Well, I was embracing it for a while, but as you can see, Wednesday was the day I had said no more. (laughs) I was like, I'm doing this. I'm going great. Well, because in my family, gray hair comes on like in your twenties. So genetically, 
Well, it started probably in my 30s, but like my dad, my grandpa, um, everybody on that side, very, very young, like full head of gray hair by the time they were in their 30s. Um, so I know that's not necessarily an aging thing, just a genetic thing. But so I was going to embrace it because it was getting too hard to fight at a certain point because it was just wanting to be there. And I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm doing this. Well, you know, it, it was just such a, a change in the look of compared to how I felt. Like if I think, I think if I wouldn't have changed my ways, that look would have gone along with how I felt. Yeah. And I wasn't planning to be like, just the let yourself go gray hair kind of thing. I wanted to be like, put some fun colors in it, have the silvery streaks, you know, do something yeah. fun with it. But it just, it, it didn't make me feel good um, yeah. the way it looked. So, but you know, that's a choice too. I was like, I'll give it a shot. I can do what I want. And if I don't like it, it's hair. I can change it if I feel like it. But I think, don't you feel like, so I know that's, that's a, a, a process you went through recently, mm -hmm. you know, before that, I guess what I, 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 what I'm hearing from women, it's like, you know, you start to get gray hair and immediately the thing is, I can't let the world see this. I've got to, whether you feel old or not, it's just something mm -hmm. that it's part of the aging process. And, and even though they do have the little hair color for men and stuff like that, you know, you don't see a lot of men doing that. That's just, no. they don't have the same type of, of, no. I mean, hang up for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do you know what I mean, LT, like by, by that? Yeah. When, when men get gray, they get distinguished. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. different, but I started getting, I started getting gray in my thirties and I've, had it colored ever since so it was just something that I just was not ready to do yet and I'm not saying that I want one day my mom was gray early and she's never had her hair colored she's always just embraced it but I just feel like that it did age me and I and I did want to keep it brown as long as I could but I will say that it was harder because it was something that I mean, that was something that I could control because I felt like that I was so up and down in my yo-yo and I feel like it did change my appearance. And I always berated myself because I didn't feel like that I looked my best. And that's why I tried to avoid cameras and avoid a picture or anything thing like that, because I didn't want a record of that. And there is a period of time where there, you're not going to see any pictures of me because I wasn't in them. And then you see some, then they're like, oh gosh. But, you know, I felt like I could control that. And so that is that's why I did it, I think. I think, you know, what we've talked about in our group is we have some women in our group who are in my program who are embracing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it became yeah. a topic of conversation. Um, I started getting gray hair when my, when my diet was bad and I wasn't feeling well. And they, it went away when I changed my diet. So actually, mm -hmm. this is the first year in this past maybe even six months that I'm really having... Um, you know, a I'll see a little, a little one here or there, and they're all new hairs. They're all like, they come in, yeah. you know, they're like these little uh -huh. um, silvery hairs. And so I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but, but I, I think, you know, we, you know, usually as women, we feel like that's that we ha have to do something about it. Um, and, um, and yeah, I totally am. Like I, I saw Cindy Lauper and, and, you know, on yeah. some kind of commercial or program or something and she, her hair was like white or gray or whatever, but she still had these like pink streaks and things on it. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, do we feel the freedom to embrace it? That's the key. Whether what we decide to do is whatever we decide to do, but that is, is part of it, I think, is not wanting to feel like you have to, you have to color it if you don't want to. And I think for right. a lot of women, and you mentioned someone you knew, Joanne, had said that in her workplace, yeah. that she felt like she she had to appear young. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah. Do you want to say a little bit about that story? I, I don't remember the exact thing. Yeah, it was one of the moms from school and she was an older mom, older than, you know, probably a good 10 years older than the rest of us were. And 
um, she had started to let her hair go like silvery white and it was beautiful. It was a great color. And all of us were like, man, that looks so cool. We can't wait. You know, we wish our hair would look like that. And then one day she showed up and it was brown again after probably she had it like that for about a year. And we're like, what happened? Where, where'd your hair go? You know? And she's like, I had to do it for work because they were doing layoffs. And, you know, she felt like she was on the chopping block because she looked her age or, you know, looked right. older than the other girls that were the younger girls that were there. So she felt pressured to, you know, make a quick change so she could keep her job. And, you know, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's, that's the problem is that, you know, we spend our lives taking care of other people. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, we start to show any type of, whether it's just showing our age or feeling, you know, looking not our best, we have a, there's, there's also a guilt associated with that. Like, you know, um, I, you know, we've talked before about that ridiculous Anjali commercial that when we were growing up about, you know, I can bring home the bacon and fry it up in a pan and never let you forget you're a man. And so it's like, you know, you had this woman in a, in a business suit doing this whole thing. And, um, you know, that's what, what we kind of all grew up with is the ideal. And it's ridiculous um, that we feel mm -hmm. like we have to do it all. And it's all stuff for other people. She, you know, when she's frying it up in a pan and going to work and taking care of the kid, you know, you don't see her also practicing any kind of self-care. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so it's no, you know, we get to a point where we're just tapped out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then on top of that, we're not allowed to age. Mm -hmm. um, and so it can be, you know, I think it makes people either feel desperate or it makes them feel like they want to give up, like just, well, whatever. I'm just old now. I don't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you feel though, I think part, as I thought about this, and about the things that, you know, make us feel old. Um, I remember my grandma being, you know, a singer. Um, she's a singer songwriter her whole life and it was her passion. Uh, and I remember one day being over at her house um, and saying, you know, uh, she wasn't doing any more like watching the grandkids and stuff like that because she had gotten too sick for that. And I said, um, I said, hey, where's your guitar? I usually see your guitar sitting around here somewhere because she was always, anytime anyone came over, it was like her opportunity to get her guitar out and start singing. And she said, um, I just I just don't play it anymore. And I, it, I mean, that was shocking to me because she had, I had grown up with that. And she, I said, well, why? And she said, well, there's just nobody to sing to anymore. And it was heartbreaking to me because I realized she just didn't feel like she had any kind of purpose. Mm. And I mm -hmm. think that is part of what makes us feel old as well as we like exactly what you said, LT is here's another birthday that passed and I'm not living the life that I thought I was supposed mm -hmm. to be living or that I wanted to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. you, and, and, you know, there's, a, I wish I would have written it down. There's this uh, quote by Brene Brown about how middle life is about, you know, um, mother nature shaking you and saying it's time mm -hmm. to use yes. your gifts. Mm -hmm. It's now or never. There's some profanity in that quote. And I cannot remember exactly what it is, <laughs> but, but it's, but the point is that you do start to ask yourself, what am I, what am I really, really here for? Um, so you know, in what ways during that time do you feel like you were starting to settle? What had you accepted that you feel now is like, you know, unacceptable? I think I had just given up because I was in such a chronic state of fatigue and a chronic state of pain. And I felt, you know, I, my mind was still going like, oh, I wish I could have pursued this I wish I could have pursued that but how could I physically do that like I can't physically go back to school because I'm so exhausted I can't stay up past seven o'clock at night 
how right. could I further, you know, my education or how could I pursue a new endeavor when I don't physically have the energy to do that? So, well, I guess this is it. So, you know, that, that was it. I felt really defeated. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. What about you, Elsie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always felt defeated. I, I felt like that I couldn't do it. I, I always just kind of like, just was sad. I went through um, such a depression. I, I really could not lift it out. I feel like that even with all of that lifted now, that's why I feel so excited because I feel like the best is really yet to come. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's so many opportunities that are available to me to now. And I feel like a little kid, like I'm excited getting to find out what they are because first of all, you know, our children are for the most part raised and one's about to go to college. And I just, the youngest, and I just feel like that a whole life is about to be opened up. And I really don't know what that's going to look like, but I know I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. And I think before I was in a state of mind, where I was not looking forward to most things, I was just getting it done. And so when you have a lightness and spirit about you, I just know that I'm engaged more with people. I laugh more with people. I can brush off things better than I used to before. I can kind of see different perspectives from things and I can analyze things from a different area. Whereas before I just would have been a real quick throw in the towel or that's that, or she's like that, or he's like that, or just forget it. You know, I would have, I would have really been like that. Whereas now I can, my critical thinking is a lot better yeah. than it used to be. And that excites me because it just opens up a world of possibilities instead of putting every little thing perspective in a box. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we talk so much about how your physiology affects what you focus on. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is so true. When you're not feeling well, um, you know, mentally and physically, it's going to focus how right. you see not just yourself, but your whole world and everybody in it. Um, and when you yes. are happier with yourself, then it also allows you to give more grace to other people, which makes you a way better person to be around. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yes. And I was angry all the time. And I think the underlying reason I was angry because I, I always, I'm a very motivated person and I always want more. I want to learn more. I want to do more. And I, because I couldn't, and for so many years I didn't, I got super angry with myself. Like, oh, well, that was great. What did you do? You threw it all away. Like you threw it all away and now it's over. And now what, you know, and I got really angry with myself. And I think that comes out to other people because then I got resentful like well you're the reason I did this like you're the reason I gave up everything and here now I am with what mm -hmm. you know so I and that because all the chemicals running through my bloodstream I didn't have good coping skills to even you know voice what that felt like I was just always angry and like LT says anything could tip you off when you're right on the edge like that mm -hmm. so you know getting past the most that benign nothing yeah. Right. Just nothing, nothing, yeah. you know? And, and so like being past that now and feeling like there is something that I'm going to be able to do in this next chapter, that all that anger is gone. Like it's just gone. Right. I, don't feel, I don't feel like I gave up everything for the last 47 years. And now what? Now I'm like, right. now what? Now what? What's next? Right. So, exactly. Yeah. It's that excitement. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. living out like when you really embrace who you fully are mm -hmm. and what you bring to the table mm -hmm. um which is is again so hard to do yeah. when you are not feeling well because you don't feel like you're bringing any you know you feel like you're just being poured out you yeah. know you feel like you're mm -hmm. being depleted for sure but who you are isn't coming through it's just mm -hmm. what you can do for right, people right. that's coming through. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And in April says, agree so much. I was just getting through the day, day after day. Now I'm living each day to the fullest, feeling grateful and positive so much more often. Um, April is in our, our uh, program. Mm -hmm. And um, L, uh, Linda says, yes, LT, the best is yet to come. Um, living mm -hmm. our best is the greatest feeling. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's just, it's a totally different perspective and it's not just because you lost some weight. Mm -hmm. It no. is when it's, it's, it is getting healthy inside and out. Um, and, and so that is, that is the key. Uh, we, we think that it's just 
you know, our goal, we're just chasing weight loss all the time. And we think that's the thing that's going to do it. If I just get the weight off, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. And yet, and yeah, of course we want, we all want to be at our ideal weight for sure, but that isn't really the thing. It is unloading all of um, the, the lack of setting boundaries mm -hmm. and um, the, the pressure that we put on ourselves unduly and um, the, the lack of self-care and all of these things that have built up in this pipeline that ends up with weight gain and yeah. ends up with you not feeling well. Um, so if, um, you know, I think also for, for us, you know, we, we it, you know, it's great to talk about uh, how much more grace that we have for other people and how much happier that we feel. But I think also for all of us, it is, um, you know, realizing that if that I don't have to okay my vision for my life with anyone. Right. And that I am, um, you know, I am okay making my own choices and living my life. And if other people don't agree with that, I don't care. Whereas before, mm -hmm. I really felt so, you know, I think feeling weak in your body makes you feel weak in your spirit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was, I, so it was really easy for me to be influenced by other people's opinions because I didn't even really know what I was here for or trying mm -hmm. to do. Um, so what do you guys think about that? How do you feel more like you? Well, I think, I think age also gives you a perspective that you didn't have when you were 20. And also in the same sentence, like getting healthy and having age behind you gives you such a different perspective than being unhealthy and having age or, you know, being healthy, but being young, you know, right. you just have a, such a unique perspective at this point that, like you said, you don't care what other people think because you're finally confident in your own choices. And you're finally past that age of where you're going, okay, why don't you tell me what I should do? Why don't you tell me which direction I should take or which path I should go in my life? And we spend so many years listening to what other people think we should do with our lives and then get to this age and we're like, oh crap, that's not what I wanted to do at all. And, you know, it's, it's hard to undo that and, and not feel, you know, like you still have a purpose when you don't feel good. And, and now I think when you feel better, you're like, but I still have another whole half of my life to go. I can do what I want. And, and I, that having two kids, like having two daughters, that's like my one main thing is don't let anybody tell you what you, what you should do, especially me. Don't even let your own mom tell you what you should do or what path you should take, because don't wake up one day when you're 45 and go, what is all this? This is not what I chose, you know, like, not that I regret it, but you know, you do have some things where you're like, this isn't well, really the path I was on, and but here we are. You lose your identity. Um, yeah. As a, when you're, especially, I won't say only, um, but especially as a mom, mm -hmm. um, it's really easy just to be a mom or a yeah. wife or, you know, it, 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 again, it becomes all about what you can provide mm -hmm. and not who you are. And so, yeah, you wake up at some point and, and go, but what about the me, the me part, the part that's just me, mm -hmm. where I have certain things that are unique and special about me mm -hmm. that aren't just related to, um, you know, soccer and lunches mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, uh, slumber parties and whatever, you know, which are wonderful things, but mm -hmm. it's still not who you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. um uh, april says i signed up for my first 5k pushing the grandson in the stroller i will not be the grandma sitting on the sideline <laughs> absolutely that's the thing is you know they say youth is wasted on the young but when you feel like this like i don't feel like that anymore like i can see why people say that because you do like you said joanne you gain this wisdom mm -hmm. and you think wow if only i were younger but what if you feel younger then mm -hmm. you have it all. You yeah, have that's all right. Yep, it's the perfect combination of everything right now. Yep. 
that's what that's exactly how I would say it. It's come together at such a time as this, and it's the perfect combination. You've got the wisdom, you've got the experience, you've got a fresh perspective, and yet you're still young enough to really not be limited by any physical something that you can't do. And I really feel like that that has just opened up a tremendous world. And it makes me excited about wanting to try new things even and do new things. Because before I was in the sidelines thinking that I was too big to do that, or I didn't want to participate, or I was going to be laughed at, or that was not going to be fun, or that was going to be uncomfortable. You know, if you were, you know, I've talked about before that whitewater rafting or zip lining or, yeah. you know, skiing, you know, the family went skiing, but I didn't ski because I didn't feel comfortable in the gear. Well, see, I'm going to be the first one putting on the boots and putting on the stuff the next time we go, because I just feel like that I, I'm not going to, I'm going to try new things and I'm excited about trying new things and I'm hopeful for that. And I think before in my old life that I always had a glimmer of hope because I wouldn't have kept doing program after program if I didn't have a glimmer, because I always thought something is going to happen. It's, that's going to be the next one. It's going to be this one because I never gave up completely. Because I did keep signing up for something, thinking that it was going to come. And when I finally found it, and that's what this is, you know, that's why I tell you that I'm eternally grateful because I just feel like it's finally happened and it's mm -hmm. better than I even envisioned. I didn't quite know that you could be this hopeful and this easy to maneuver in this life. Because it's very easy to maneuver and to get in and out. And it is very fun to shop and be able to buy things that you can mm -hmm. wear. It's, it's, it's fun to get compliments again. It's fun to have your husband say, you know, you're just a whole new person. I mean, that's fun, you know, mm -hmm. to get that kind of recognition and to feel like that you're young enough to, to still contribute. And the way I look at it is 30 years of a yo-yo and all of the things were not for nothing because I feel like that I'm able to take that experience. And when I say I understand where somebody is, I really understand. And I can be with you and listen to you and be right with you because I'm not thinking about my junk. I'm only thinking about you. Right. And that's where I can, I think that that's, that's a gift that I can't, can have that, that will help somebody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure. When you've come through the fire, yeah. it's, you know, that's the best part is being able to make meaning of that. Yes. By seeing people who are still in it and grabbing their hand and saying, I can help you walk through this. We can get through it together. Yeah. And that's yeah. how I look at that, uh, look at that past. And that does bring me great solace. I will. Yeah. That's, that's a good word for me is I feel like it, it was, it was worth it. And I'm not going to lament and cry and just be like, oh, what a waste. I'm going to be like, you know, that really fortified me in other areas. I'm much stronger in other areas because of it. Right. And that's, the, yeah. and that's, that is how we make meaning of our experiences by how we can help other people to get through these things. And we know that there are so many women out there right now who are feeling defeated, feeling old, not feeling yes. feminine, feeling like this is the best part of their lives is over. Um, you know, and th those are the people that, that we want to help and that we can help and that we have helped. Um, so how would you, um, how would you both define aging gracefully now at this point in your life? I think getting to a point of allowing myself to be authentically who I am and not having a fear of judgment from that and, and letting loose of all the crap that we listened to all our lives and being brave enough to shed that and not have that hang on to us and allowing ourselves to move forward. I think that's being graceful with aging is allowing yourself to just be authentically who you were meant to be and stop hanging on to all everything that's, that's holding you back really, because mm -hmm. all of this stuff is just holding you back from what you're truly meant to be, you know, here for. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I would say it's not being dragged to something because you feel out of, you feel obligated or you feel like you should, or that's what it's expected of you. And you know, what will people think? It's, it's really wonderful to be at this age and to just kind of have a, I'm driving the bus. I'm going to pick and choose what I like. And I want to make things that make me happy and to be around positive people. And I want to be engaged in meaningful activity. And it's things that I want to do, not because I feel like I have to. 
Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. I think also, I, I, we never said, any of us said how old we are. Um, so I was just thinking like, well, you know, we're talking about being this age. And, and so I am 51. Um, and how old are you guys? I'm about to be 48 this summer. 48? Almost. Uh -huh. A couple yep. months. Okay. And I'll be, I'll be 51 in May. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is something that, I mean, you know, I, I feel like this is the best part of my life so far. And I'm in menopause. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Where most women are saying like, well, here's the beginning of the end. Yeah. And it just doesn't yep. have to be that way. It really, if you are healthy in your, in your body and in your mind, then it can be an amazing part of your life. Mm -hmm. um, and in some ways, I honestly feel like I am just uh, getting started. Mm -hmm. And so that is, Absolutely. So, it's exciting to feel it is. Way. Whatever you choose to do, it, the, the point is that when you feel good um, and you feel unencumbered emotionally by all those things that were holding you back, yes. you have the freedom to choose whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have no physical limitations that aren't able to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's exactly what it is. And then you still feel like that you're like, here we are about to be empty nesters and we feel like that we're newly married again. I mean, it really does feel that way. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a totally different vibe going on in the house. I'll just put it that way. It really, it really is. Well, and that's the vibe that's going on in, in my program, the plant power revolution is I tell people all the time because it's just the best way to describe it. It's very much because we, everyone in there is a little bit different age, but we're all in the same part of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very much like fifties and new 30 because yep. you have yep. so many people in there who are living vibrantly and really, really excited about their lives again. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Gina says, I'm 55 and loving being plant-based. All my aches and pains are going away. And it's such a great feeling. Uh, Colleen says, you're all mm -hmm. beautiful. She's 32. I know Colleen has adopted a plant-based diet as well. Um, so yes. uh, I want to talk just briefly about, before we go, about how we can help you. Uh, because I think in, you know, uh, I was talking to someone the other day and she had listened to some of our videos and um, read some things that I had posted. And she said, you know, nobody's really talking about this the way you are um, mm -hmm. out there. You know, they're talking about losing weight. Um, they're talking about hormone problems. You know, they're, they're talking about different right. aspects, but mm -hmm. as a whole, addressing the yeah. whole woman, what the problem is and how to resolve this to get you feeling like the best version of yourself. Um, that she's like, nobody's really talking about this like you are. And so that's exciting um, that we can, that's why I call it a revolution yeah. because it really is about embracing this part of your life, not just getting the weight off, not just feeling or looking younger, but actually embracing this and being excited about it. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview um, of my program um, and, uh, and let you know what it's about. So we work intensely together for four months and uh, I work with you on mindset and you have a coach like LT or Joanne or April or Linda um, who, is, who has been there and lost the weight. Uh, and has, uh, you know, done this on my program and, and is with you every step of the way. These women work very closely with their clients and have uh, brought them out of, uh, you know, that place of feeling like what we were talking about, you know, sort of like, I don't know what to do and how to do it to feeling strong um, and feeling um, vibrant again. And we start with uh, getting rid of your cravings because for a lot of us, that was the problem right off the, right off the bat was that we just could not, and even what your, your mom was talking about LT, where mm -hmm. it's like, you're eating this stuff. And even though, you know, it's bad, you can't stop. I can't stop. And I just, and I have said many, many times that I severely underestimated it for myself. And that really, that is, I'm attributing that to one of the key components 
to my success is that I have moved past that and just could not do it before. Tried and tried and tried, but with your program, I was able to do that. Right. And um, we do that in the first five days, as crazy yes. as that sounds, um, you know, because you've been struggling with this for years. It is a five day cleanse where we get tons of good food and nutrition into your body. There's no fasting. It's all um, fresh juices, which you can even order from me or make yourself. I give you the recipes um, and you, um, you know, you follow that for five days. And in at the end, when you get up on day six, you feel different, yeah. you feel in control. And that monkey of food addiction and that, that hanger that you had coming yes. in is gone. Um, and then we have for the next three weeks after the cleanse, uh, you're just eating super clean and so no processed foods. Uh, and we start by um, getting relief from your symptoms that we, you know, I have women who are telling me that they are experiencing relief from inflammation that they've had for years in the first week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Doing. And, and so it is about really allowing your body to start that healing process. We start with that, with healing your gut and really allowing your body to um, start healing and letting the go of the weight from there. So that's what the next three weeks are about. And it's no calorie counting, no carb counting. Um, we really just focus on ratios. Um, through my, my program is all about food exchanges and there's a ton of food to, to choose from. And it's also just a ton of food. It's you, you, you're never hungry. Um, so that was the other thing is that it's not about deprivation. It's not counting calories, counting points or whatever. It's about teaching you how to eat in a way in, in, in what ratio, what percentage of things are you eating that are really um, going to let you let go of the weight and just be vibrantly healthy. Mm -hmm. A lot of women start a plant-based diet and they um, they'll say to me, well, I tried it, but it didn't work for me. I promise you, if you tried it, it didn't work for you. You just weren't doing it, doing it the way that, that you need to. That's all. And um, if you saw even my post from earlier today of I made a 15 minute meal last night that was delicious. So you also don't have to spend a ton of time in the kitchen. Um, and now we have uh, the plant powered chef which is, um, you know, our, our plant-based meal delivery service for people that uh, don't want to spend their time in the kitchen. Um, so I teach you how to cook. Uh, we teach you even if you want to do batch cooking, you can. Um, but we also have the meal delivery service as well. So all three of us do it differently. And so that's what this is about, is, is, is helping you figure a way to do this within your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then for the, the, the next two to four months, uh, two through four months of the program, you're learning how to indulge. You're going from that super clean eating to learning how to indulge without going off the rails, which is so important. And I think that's where so many diets fail is that you go into a holiday, you go into, um, you know, um, you know, your birthday, a cookout, whatever the thing of vacation, um, or you're just having a hard time and you don't know how to keep it going, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're doing the points plan where, you know, well, that's all going off the, out the window today. I'm gonna get a number one and use all my points for the day and then not eat for the rest of the day. Or, um, well, I definitely can't do keto during the holidays, so I'm just gonna screw it, you know, and then you end up gaining all your weight back and then January 1st, you're <laughs> like, okay, I gotta start again. So these yeah. are all things that we can't sustain. And so in my program and those in, in months two through four, we are teaching you how to be healthy during that time so that you can still indulge, but you're doing it in a way where you're still healthy, you're still losing the weight and you're living your life. Mm -hmm. um, throughout the program, we work on mindset so that you are feeling strong and control, like in control, like we are now um, in a way that you never have before. And that's really about getting uh, your um, your getting out of your own way. I help you uh, with your limiting beliefs. It's like it's like driving down the road. What happens is when we're doing this yo-yo dieting, um, we've talked about this before. Is that you know if you if you live in Phoenix and you want to go to San Diego, what happens is you know your whole life you're dreaming of living in San Diego. And uh, maybe once or twice a year you get in the car and you're like, that's it. I packed up all my stuff. I'm moving. And then about, you know, uh, a quarter of the way or halfway there, you hit a roadblock and you're like, ah, oh, well, forget that I'm going home and you turn around and go home. 
And we do that again and again and again, and years and years go by and you never make it to San Diego. So uh, my mindset work is designed to help you just get out of the car, move that block to the side, get back in and keep going yep. to your destination. And so that is what the, the mindset work allows you to get out of your own way. And that helps you achieve goals in every area of your life, not just your health. And that's one of the reasons why we are all feeling so empowered. Um, and, and so that's, it's exciting. Um, and my, my program is physician approved. Uh, I've helped hundreds of women over the past 10 years. And you also get, uh, in, like I said, individualized coaching. Um, and these women are, are with their, their clients every single step of the way. Um, you get a, a group support as well, where I do not just the one-on-one -on -one mindset work with you, but um, we, do, we talk mindset in the group all the time. Mm -hmm. You get two group coaching calls a week. We have 200 women from the United States and around the world who are just so excited and motivational in there. In fact, we are doing a um, virtual 5K in there this weekend. So everybody is, uh, people have already started that and it's really exciting. We're just, we're there to make this doable and fun for life. Um, and then best of all, after that four months, you still have access to all of that for life. You still have access to the group coaching calls. You still have access to your membership site with all of the, you know, tutorials and resources that you need. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it helps. It's why the women in our group are so successful long-term because it's not just you start this and then it's, that's the end of it. Right. Uh, and then you're kind of left to your own devices. And then you're like, well, I can't really make it work on my own. You always have the support. Mm -hmm. and so that's why we're seeing the, the type of success that we're seeing in the group. Um, and it is so for this entire package, the investment is under $2,000. Um, and you're in you're in for life. Um, and it's just a small price to to pay. Um, you know, when you look at all of the yo yo dieting, that you've done and the things that you pay for. There was someone on my Facebook yesterday who um, she, a, a gym was offering a free fitness challenge and she went in and um, it was, it was not free. It was $600. And what the thing was, was you're in it for six weeks. And if you lose a certain amount of body fat and you lose 20 pounds, then you get a, a partial refund. Um, but if you don't, then you don't get any of that money back for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of stuff women do. They, they get desperate. And, and I actually talked to her cause she is a friend of mine on Facebook. I, I messaged her cause she was so angry that she signed up for this. Cause it ended up being just a mess. And I, you know, messaged her behind the scenes. I'm like, what is going on with you? And she's like, I just, I just wanted to get the weight off. I just thought this would make me do it. This is the kind of stuff we do over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you are ready to finally do this right um, and do it for good and feel amazing um, and address all the components in a way that works for you and your life, um, then please uh, send me, it. you can actually go to, you just click on my profile and just private message me. And uh, you can do that for any of us, for LT and Joanne as well. And um, we are here to help you and talk to you about this. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it and see if it's a good fit for you. And I would just, uh, I would love, I'm so excited every time someone joins our, our group because um, it's always just so, it's so amazing and life affirming for all of us to see that kind of transformation. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, we love it. Love successes. We celebrate successes and there will be days and we're there with you in the trenches. I mean, it's just 360 degrees of support, motivation, positivity, because, you know, in our old life, we gave in a little bit too quick. We tried something and we gave in this. We're just picking it right back up, right back up. Right. And yeah, it, that's so true, because, you know, if you have a success in our group, you have tons of comments where people are so happy for yes. you. And so excited for you and like you rock. And then we had, you know, like someone yesterday said, um, you know, I'm having a, a minor surgery tomorrow, but I'm really, I'm really worried about it. And I saw, you know, that she already had like 37 comments on there where people are just like, you've got this, I'm sending positive vibes. Yeah. 
you know, someone else posted, hey, um, everybody, let's send her positive vibes today, like they did that this morning. And so we're just all there for each other. It's so weird. It's it, it's great for me, as bad as a rap as Facebook gets, it's it is it, you know, and for good reason sometimes. Um, it is such an amazing tool for us to connect with one another. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it really is like a family in there and a sisterhood, and it's it's amazing. It is. So, you guys aren't you guys aren't getting rid of me. I've been in a year and a half and you're not, I'm not going anywhere. So <laughs> right. <I'm never laughs> that's, leaving. that's the thing is it's lifetime membership. You know, um, you, you know, I wanted that from the start because I, I never, I always, I didn't have support when I started this journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. um, I, I knew that that was a component that people really needed and especially women. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it that is a very big difference. It does. Mm -hmm. When you really have that community of healthy women who are there for you on good days and bad and helping you get through this, not just for three, a three or four month program, but forever, right. that makes mm -hmm. a huge difference. Um, so if, again, just, uh, you can click on my, pri my profile and private message me and we'll talk and see if it's a good fit for you. But I just want to thank everyone um, who joined in uh, online today. And then also, of course, uh, LT and Joanne and Jane for joining us. That is such a treat. And, um, and uh, we are uh, so happy for you to join us every week and excited that, that we were able to bring this message to you today. So um, stay strong out there and we will see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.